Howdy. In this video, what we're going to do is we're going to introduce kinematics. Now, for kinematics, literally all you need to know, especially with Don't Panic, is how to find a derivative, how to find an integral or antiderivative, and when to use a derivative and integral. And if you know that, now y'all are going to be solid for this exam. So if you already know how to take a derivative and integral, man, you're good. However, if not, this needs to be fluent. You'll be taking derivatives and antiderivatives or integrals throughout the entire semester. So we need to make sure this is perfect. Let's first talk about how to find a derivative. Now, the way that you find a derivative is, let's say you're given some f of t, and that's a t to the n, where a and n are just some constants. t is your variable. What you're going to do is you're going to take this n value, multiply it in front, and then subtract one from the exponent. So for example, if f of t is 7t cubed, all you're going to do to take the derivative is you take this 3 to multiply it in front. 7 times 3, that's 21. You subtract one from the top, and so it's a 2. So hence it's 21t squared. The derivative of any number, if f of t is a number, the derivative of any number is 0. So for example, the derivative of 15 is just 0. So let's run through an example. Let's say that I want to find the derivative of 3t to the 4th plus 5t squared plus 6t plus 10. The way you would take that derivative, take this 4, multiply it in front, so it's a 12t. You subtract one from the top, it makes it cubed, so 12t cubed. For this one, so 5t squared, I'm going to take this 2, multiply it in front, so 5 times 2, that's 10. Subtract one from the top, uh, 2 minus 1 is 1, so hence it's just 10t. For the 60, whenever there's no exponent, you assume, of course, for that to be a 1, and 6 times 1 is 6, and 1 minus 1 is 0, the, and so anything raised to the 0 is 1, which is why you're just left over with the 6. Or you can just remember the derivative of any number times t is simply just that number. But that's how you take a derivative. Now that we know how to take a derivative, let's take an antiderivative, or integral. The way you're going to do that, okay, Say I want to take this symbol right here means to uh, take the antiderivative or the integral. If you wanted to integrate a t to the n, where a and n are just numbers, t is your variable, what you're going to do is you're simply just going to add 1 to the top and divide by that number. And then you're going to write this plus constant c. The reason you need to write this plus c is because whenever you take the antiderivative of the derivative, it needs to go back to its original function. So let's say I took the antiderivative of this guy up here, the 12t uh, cubed plus 10t plus 6. What you would be left with is 3t to the 4th plus 5t squared plus 6t plus 10. Well, except you wouldn't have the plus 10 because there's nothing there. And so that's what the c stands for. The c is some arbitrary constant. It could be 0, or it could be 1, or it could be 2, or it could be 10. We don't know, and given initial conditions, we'll be able to solve for that. And we are going to be solving for this, for that plus C, that constant, several times throughout kinematic problems. But anyways, let's go through an ex example real quick. Say I wanted to integrate 7t cubed. All you have to do is add 1 to the top. 3 plus 1 is 4. Take that number and then just divide it. So it be 7t to the 4th divided by 4, and as always, plus C. Finally, the, an, uh, the antiderivative of any number is just that number times t plus c. So the integral of 15 is simply 15t plus c. So running through an example, let's say that I want to integrate the exact same thing. But now we're going to do the antiderivative of 3t to the 4th plus 5t squared plus 6t plus 10. All I'm doing, adding 1 to the top, that's 5, and dividing. Adding 1 to the top, that's 3, and then dividing. Adding 1 to the top, that's 2, and then dividing. And 6 divided by 2 is 3. Then I take this 10, this number, the integral of any number is just that number times t, and then finally always plus c. Now that I know how to take a derivative, now that I know how to take an antiderivative, and by the way, in uh, physics 218, don't panic, this is as hard as your derivatives and integrals get. Um, I've only seen one example ever where you had to use like a quotient rule, and that was pretty nuts. Um, but you're not going to get into any crazy derivatives and integrals. 
Save that for your calculus class. But we need to know what's more important, what's most important, is when. When to use a derivative and integral. Okay? What's going to happen is you're going to be, with kinematics, you're going to have one of three equations. You'll have a position, a velocity, and an acceleration. If you're given a position and you want to find velocity, or if you're given a velocity and you want to find acceleration, anyways, whenever you go down um, this little, I guess, chart table, whatever you want to call it, you will take the derivative. Velocity is the rate of change, is the derivative of position. And acceleration is the rate of change, or derivative of velocity. But if you're given acceleration, and you want to find velocity, or if you're given acceleration and you want to find position, you're going to have to integrate up in order to get to that position. Okay? So now that we have the basic strategies um, and tools we need to solve the kinematics problems, join me in the next several videos, and I'll show you how to apply derivatives and integrals to uh, test-like kinematic problems.